Hi guys, Lucy aka The Watchbox Diaries here and welcome to my channel. Now, have you ever found a watch that initially seems perfect? Great specs, great aesthetics, and then you look a little bit closer or you notice something about it and you just can't unsee it. I decided to put a list together of some of the pieces that were completely ruined by one design feature. Some of these you'll agree with, some of them you'll think, Lucy, you've gone mad, there's nothing wrong with that. Let me know your thoughts about my selections at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Breitling are one of those brands for me that I just haven't found my piece yet. When they announced they were doing a collaboration with Victoria Beckham, I was very intrigued. I think she's a fantastic fashion designer. So I thought, mm, how's this gonna turn out? I actually really love the design and love the collaboration. I managed to get hands on one and yeah, appreciated it. The counterweight, which is usually a B, they've now put a VB on, which I thought was quite a smart idea. The bracelet seems a lot sturdier, the colorways were great, and I didn't even mind the designs with diamonds on the dial because they were done in a very subtle way. Liked it on the wrist, good weight, good quality, good design. And then I found something that I couldn't unsee. Now, you should all know by now, I'm not a fan of faff on a dial. Keep it clean, people. So, you can imagine how upset I was that I finally found a Breitling that I could connect with. And then it had one of 400 just directly on the dial. Why? I understand people like a limited edition, that's absolutely fine. If you wanna pop that bad boy on the back, Go for it. That is where it belongs. Apologies in advance for butchering the name Kudoki. I hope that's right. I probably should have Googled the pronunciation of it before doing a YouTube video. However, they are a German independent brand that funnel their passion into their work and their designs. They are well made, well executed, and they even make their own movements. Now, when you make your own movements, you can design the movement however you like. And the design that they went for is a little suspect. I wonder if they knew this before production. Like, did it get signed off by somebody? Did they know that this is exactly what they were doing and it was gonna be a talking point? Because it is a talking point. Their watches are absolutely beautifully made but every time I see this watch, I giggle because I'm immature and still giggle at things like that. Moving on to the Amiga Seamaster, specifically the No Time To Die. Love everything else about this watch, love the collaboration, love the aesthetics, but my God, is that mesh bracelet a hair puller. I don't have particularly hairy arms, so I really feel bad for people who do, because this mesh bracelet could cause you a little bit of pain. For those of you screaming, but you can put it on a NATO and it still looks great. Yes, but this mesh bracelet was designed to be released with this watch. So I feel like it wasn't tested properly before it hit production. So the Longines Spirit is a watch that I personally reviewed and absolutely raved about. I love this watch. This it isn't mine, <laughs> it's some of yours. So from the feedback that I got, there was one particular design feature that gave you guys the ick. That design feature is the five stars on the dial. Someone described it as, oh, that's an excellent Uber rating they've got. I mean, now when I look at the watch, I do think of that comment in my head. It wouldn't stop me from loving it, but it does make me think of the, the comments there. So the rating joke is actually correct and it's accurate because Longines used to put the five stars on their watches because they were five star watches. They were their high quality, high end Longines pieces. And although, they don't necessarily need to do that anymore. I think it's now more of a heritage thing. If they didn't have that on there, would it make a difference, I wonder? Me personally, I don't mind it, but a couple of you do find it a bit icky. To me, this is the worst one. This is the one I just can't get over. 
The Vacheron, American 1921. One thing about it that just stops me buying it is the price. I just can't afford one. It's really sad. Okay, so the last one's a little bit of a joke, but I am very genuinely sad that I can't afford one. What did you guys think of the other options though? Do you have a problem with that one feature or do you think, Lucy, what are you on about? It's fine. Let me know in the comments section and if you have other watches that one design feature of it just gives you the absolute ick let me know in the comment section below. I could do probably do another of these videos. <laughs> if you have enjoyed my content and you want to support my channel, then you gotta do the YouTube -y things. Make sure you've given it a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you want YouTube to notify you of my upcoming videos, just click the little bell and it will do its thing. Until next time though, bye.